I don't think too many of us were ready. Beautiful work. For the beautiful work, but shocking quality of some of the paintings, they did disturb. Before I was here as a priest, I was sitting somewhere over there, and I looked over there, and I saw that one with the sword going through the guy's throat, and you said to yourself, "Hmm, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty interesting, isn't it?" Now, one of the murals, they're well done. One of the ones that always disturbed me. But they don't belong in a church. Uh, and still does to this day, every time I pass it in choir, is the one in the back where the woman is there with her breasts exposed. I always feel, every time I go by that, I want to do like this. Beautiful work. But. Because she looks so vulnerable and so ready to be hurt or injured and I just feel like she needs to be protected. And then uh, I turned around and I saw Gabriel uh, standing in the back there all green and so forth and said to myself, oh Lord, I've entered straight into the book of Revelation here. <laughs> I said, I've seen priests come and I've seen priests go. And I said, and I'm not gonna run you, let you run me out because of these murals. <laughs> I said, so I stayed and uh, I still think they don't belong in a church. I think they belong in an art gallery. As, as Mr. Farmer said, I think they belong in an art gallery or... As far as whether they belong in the church or not. A uh, museum or, or someplace like that, not in a church. Uh, I just can't see it in a church. You know, they said the same thing about the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Part of it was telling this story. Years and years later, people are making special pilgrimages just to see that. In vivid and emotional, uh, gut-wrenching uh, way, and I began to bring in some of my white friends from the suburbs, and they came in, saw those first murals over to the baptistry, which show um, a man's head and a knife and another one with a policeman being stabbed in the throat. They were absolutely blown away. And we're really quite, uh, not just offended, but uh, frightened. They were here. Next day, I get a call from somebody complaining about the murals. Said, so those murals are the reason why I'm afraid to drive through North Philadelphia. So I said, you mean to tell me you think that uh, one of the murals might jump off the wall and mug you or something like and that? And I am grateful to Edmund and Watson for these magnificent paintings. I do think they complement the stained glass windows. And I would like very much to have others feel that way and to raise funds to restore these stained glass windows. So please send your dollars. <laughs> Checks, big dollars. The artwork is beautiful. It was beautifully executed, but I do not feel that it belongs in the church. I think that it was appropriate at the time. Not that much has changed because a lot of the things are still going on that went not went that much has changed 40 years because ago. a lot but of the things are still going on. But now we've moved on, on and, went, and that went. the artwork should be placed in the museum. When we have visitors to the Advocate, they are startled by the artwork and they don't return. And so we are having a, a membership problem. If I'm honest with myself in, uh, in my coming to church, I come to church frequently as an angry brother. And that we should keep them, but we should explain what they are about. Uh, and then I would be happy. I think our children, for an instance, who wander over here and see this one that most gets to me. Is, does this mean if the church is saying this is what's okay, I can do that? That bothers the me. The only reason that we can be a church that to some extent uh, is an honestly interracial church is because of the fact that on one level we go through that discipline w w without having to articulate it because it's captured in the murals. We go through that discipline of struggling to offer up that anger uh, uh, to God. Once the anger is offered up to God, then it becomes possible for us to step beyond this business that 
divided us then, divides us now, and probably will divide us for years and generations to come in this culture with this culture's uh, uh, history. The hope, it seems to me, is that it is in a church and that it is in a church where it is offered up uh, uh, to God for God's healing. And that healing involves us, or at least I confess it. It involves me. As I've looked at them each Sunday, sometimes I don't look at, it's very interesting, I don't look at them a lot. And I look at this awesome, revolutionary, African cultural people art. I just know that they're here. And I often wonder, well, what would it be like in here without them? The picture that was spoken about over there, but there's also one over here. And when I come in here to worship, I have to position myself so that those are not visible to me because they're upsetting as far as my worship service. I tune it deep in, and I can pray very well with this. Um, in essence, what it means to me, if you notice, mostly all the pictures has fire in it. Mostly all of them. It has struggle. To me, it's saying, particularly the African, we will get to heaven spiritually, we will get to heaven politically, but only through the corridors of hell. But victory, because God is on our side, is inevitable. I tune it in, it inspires me. Thank you.